Okay, welcome along. We are going to do uh, the specimen paper for the A2 uh, set of exams now. And we're going to start off with paper one, which is the periodic table, elements and physical chemistry. Okay, so let's kick off with the multiple choice. Uh, the first one is uh, which row shows the atomic structure of 55 MN2+. So once 55 MN2+, if you look up on the periodic table, manganese has got 25 protons, so it's one of these. As it's 2 plus, it must have lost two electrons. So it's either of these two, 23 electrons. Um, these two numbers have to add up to 55. And if you look, protons plus neutrons, 55, uh, 25 plus 30, 55. So the answer to this one is, of course, A. Group two elements react with water forming a solution um, and a gas. Which statement is correct? Reactivity of elements decreases down the group. Uh, no, actually increases as you go down the group, so that's not right. The pH of the solution formed increases down group two. That is correct. Uh, solubility increases down group two. So straight away, we can say the answer to that is B. Um, it's not a neutralization reaction. Um, and for this one, of course, you look at this, the formula of strontium hydroxide is wrong. That should be SR bracket, OH close bracket, twice for that one. Okay, so moving on, question three then. Um, chloroethene is prepared uh, by that reaction. Uh, which change would result in an increased equilibrium yield of chloroethene? So we want more of this guy here. Well, you've got one mole of gas on that side and two moles of gas on that side. So if you increase the pressure, it'll actually go to the reactants. Increase the surface area of catalyst. Remember, catalyst only increases rate of reaction, doesn't affect yield. Increase the temperature. Well, it's an endothermic reaction. So if you increase the temperature, the reaction is driven in the endothermic direction. So the answer to three is C. Okay, so you've got to do um, some calculations for this one. Um, this is, of course, you're going to have to do a HESS cycle. You notice they're giving you formation data, so down here would be your elements. I'm not going to put them in because um, it's just a quick calculation. Um, oh, it doesn't do that. Um, okay, so uh, formation of titanium tetrachloride is only one of them, so it's minus 8 over 4. Um, two waters is 2 times minus 286. On this arrow, uh, titanium dioxide is minus 945, and you make 4 HCl, so it's 4 times 92, like so. Um, that is equal to minus 368, um, and that is equal to minus 5. Seven, two. Okay, if you notice, you draw your little um, circle, put your arrows on. These two arrows are going in the same direction. So these two plus delta H equals that. So delta H minus 804 minus 572 is equal to minus 945 minus 368. If you do all of that, then delta H minus 1376 is equal to minus 1313. You move it around and you will get the answer of delta H being plus 63. So the answer is D. Okay, uh, let's go for question five then. Zinc reacts with copper two sulfate solution. Which apparatus could be used to determine the concentration of copper sulfate for rate reaction? Well, obviously, as zinc reacts with copper sulfate, the blue colour of copper sulfate is going to uh, disappear. It will become colourless. So you're looking for something that can detect a colour change. So the answer, of course, is C, a colourometer. Uh, let's whiz on then to question six. A uh, boiling point of hydrogen bromide is minus 67, and of hydrogen iodide is minus 34. Can be this can be explained in some strengths of bonds or interactions. So which one is it going to be? Covalent bonds, no way. Covalent bonds are not broken during bonding, uh, boiling. Uh, hydrogen bonds, um, neither of these guys are going to have hydrogen bonds because for hydrogen bonds, your hydrogen atom needs to be attached to an oxygen and nitrogen or fluorine atom. Permanent dipole-dipole interactions, well, 
As doesn't explain it, because the boiling point of hydrogen iodide is higher than hydrogen bromide, and yet bromine is more electronegative than iodine. So if that was the explanation, it would be the other way round. Um, induced dipole dipole, that's the one we're looking for because, uh, of course, induced dipole dipole depends on the number of electrons that you've got in your molecule, and hydrogen iodide will have a lot more electrons than hydrogen bromide because iodine have more electrons. So the answer is D. Right, so question seven then. The first, first to eight successive ionisation energy of an element in period three are shown. What is the element? Well, you can do this really by looking. Um, going from there to there is times two. That's about times 1.8. Mm, okay, 1.5, something like that. Probably about the same. But can you see there's a whopping jump there um, going from that one to that one? Um, in fact, that one, if you do it on your calculus, is times 3.4 to get to that. Um, so you have lost one, two, three, four, five electrons in the outermost shell. So it must be in group five. It must be in period three. So the answer is C, phosphorus. Okay, so for this question, it wants me to find the pre-exponential factor A. Um, now, when using one of these graphs, um, log the um, natural log of A is equal to um, the y-intercept there. And if you look there, the y-intercept is 31.5. So in order to um, find log A, it's going to be E to the power of 31.5. And if you do that, you'll get the answer D. Right, so we're going to do some pH um, calculations now. We'll work with pH. So it tells me a uh, solution of prop propanoic acid has a pH of 2.89. What is the concentration of H plus? Well, you know that pH is equal minus log to the base 10 of H plus. So to find um, the concentration of H plus, it's 10 to the minus of the pH, which is 2.89. If you bang that in your calculators, uh, you will get the answer as being C. Okay, the entropy the last entropy of calcium chloride can be calculated using three of the chains below. Which one don't we need? Okay, so um, this is going to use it based on solution data. Um, so in order to do that one, you need to know the change entropy of solution and the hydration of the two ions. The one you don't need is the entropy change formation of calcium chloride, which is C. Okay, uh, which redox contains the largest change in oxidation state for sulphur? Okay, so sulphur here is going to be plus six. This is the sulphate ion. So remember, oxygen is minus two, hydrogen is plus one. Here, because hydrogen is plus one, sulphur is minus two. So that's quite a big change. Here, if I just run through that zero, that is plus four there. Uh, for the next one, this sulphur is plus two, and this sulphur is again plus four, and that's zero. And then for this one, uh, zero obviously for elemental sulphur, and plus six for that one. So the one that has the biggest change is A. Right, so this is a little bit of a sneaky one. At room temperature and pressure, the equilibrium lies well to the right hand side. So it's over this side. So it's going to be a large value because, as you know, Kc is uh, the products over reactants. And if it's on the right-hand side, we've got lots more products than reactants. So you're looking at it either being B or D. What you've got to be careful of is the units. When you do the Kc expression, you've got products. Whoops as being moles per decimeter cube. Oops, let's just do that uh, Moles per decimeter cube to the power of three. 
and the reactants is moles per decimeter cubed to the power of four, because that's squared and that squared. So that cancels your units, therefore, are moles to the minus one decimeters cubed. So your answer is going to be C for that one. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> Sorry, it's where the fours went on. The answer is going to be D, of course, because it was either B or D, it could be. So you've got a large value of, uh, a large numerical value, and your units are correct. So the answer is, oopsie daisy, D. Right, so a bit of transition metal chemistry now. Uh, copper two ions form an aqueous complex ion X with chloride ion. Which statement is true? X has optical isomers. Uh, no, it can't have optical isomers because you need a bidentate ligand uh, for it to be optically active. Um, X has a square planar shape. Um, well, it won't be square planar because copper two forms tetrahedral complexes if it's only got... Uh, four um, uh, ligands attached. Um, X has a formula CuCl4. No, it can't be, because if copper's plus two, chloride is minus one, so the charge would be minus two. X has a yellow color, that's the correct one. Um, it is going to be uh, D for that one. Okay, so question 14, um, we're adding, we've got some copper 2 sulfate solution, uh, which the following is correct. Well, we, we add potassium iodide solution. We're going to make iodine and also copper 1 iodide. Um, therefore, um, it would produce an off-white precipitate of copper 1 iodide and a brown solution of iodine. So that's correct. Uh, test 2 produce a white precipitate. Test 2 added barium chloride. We would of course make barium sulfate, which will be correct. Um, test one and two are both redox reactions. That's not correct because test two is a precipitation reaction and therefore the answer is B with both one and two being correct. Okay, here we go then. Two students set up this equilibrium system. Uh, titrated samples of the equilibrium mixture with sodium hydroxide to determine the concentration of ethanol acid. That's all fine. Use the results to calculate Kc, but they were different. Which of the reasons below could explain why they're different? Each student carried out the their experiment different temperature. That would make them different, of course, because um, if you've got uh, Kc, as you know, varies with temperature. So you do in the experiment two different temperatures, you're going to get two different values of Kc. Um, uh, each student used a different concentration of sodium hydroxide in the titration. That won't make any difference at all because you'll just carry that through in your calculations. Um, if you're using a lower concentration of sodium hydroxide, your titer will be higher, but it will all work out the same. Each student titrated the volume of the equilibrium mixture. Again, that make no difference at all. Um, if you use a small amount of the equilibrium mixture, you have a smaller amount of titer, but when you go through all the calculations, you'll still come up with the same um, concentration. Um, so the only one would make a difference. So the answer is D.